Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Stephanie Libertor from Living Beautifully Brave, Teresa Maxim from Canton First Friends Church, and Lonette Beatty from Lonette Beatty. And we are so happy to have you all with us this morning. Um, Teresa, you get to work with women a lot. Yes. What do you see women struggling with right now? Well, I think what I see most is um, of all demographics, all ages, demographic, young to old, is the image that they carry. So I think they're looking at identity, like who are they truly for this world? And I think that once we really discover who we are in Christ and with Christ, will we really be able to feel like we have purpose and meaning? Um, I think that we... We're so compa- we compare so much, and and it's like we're looking at different generations. We're looking at you know this the older generation looks to the youngest and feel like they they aren't able to adapt to technology. The young ones look to the older ones and think that they'll never be able to relate. But yet, as women, we really can look at each other and just see ourselves in each other. And I think Mm -hmm. that we just struggle with identity still. Like, we're still struggling. Like, what's our place and our purpose here? I see that across the board from young to old. And I, and I, again, if we just focus on the face of Christ, when we look to him, when we set our faces like Flint in Isaiah 57, it, when we look at him, we will find who we truly are. And I think that that's, our eyes are just so busy. We're so distracted by what's happening in the world. We're so distracted by social media. We're distracted by what the world is saying about who we should be, even as women. And I think, you know, we look to Jesus and how he looked at women, how he treated women, that he loved the women Mm -hmm. who supported him. We financially supported him. We prayerfully supported him. When you look um, at everyone who were followers of Christ, the women that were surrounding him were valuable in his sight. Mm -hmm. And so they knew who they were. And they knew their place in the kingdom of God with Jesus. And I think that once we discover who we truly are in Christ, we will find our purpose and we will, it will be so unique. The fingerprint will be so beautiful and he'll be able to just say, this is the way now walk in it. Hmm. Women tend to just kind of put it into uh, autopilot sometimes, don't they? When you're just dealing with a lot of stuff, you just kind of shift it, shift that gear into auto. I'm Mm -hmm. thinking of the right immediately after the crucifixion Mm -hmm. you know the disciples were what all hiding out you know (laughs) everybody hightail it hide somewhere what did the women do all right we need to prepare his body it never got done so let's do what needs to be done get the spices together we'll figure out how to move that rock by the time we get there Mm -hmm. And they didn't make even worrying about what are we going to do about the rock, right. keep them from going. They right. still let's go on the way. OK, we'll figure out that once we get there. Do any of these kinds of things come into mind when you are planning what is it women need right now? What, you know, what kind of a finger on the pulse of women, Stephanie, as you are being led to prepare a conference? Mm-hmm. What do you go through in getting together? Because, you know, women are women. They're just going to do what needs to be done. I think that there's nothing new under the sun. (laughs) So so the the struggles that women have had over decades is still the struggle that we have today. And it's true. It's our our identity is what Mm -hmm. Teresa was talking about. But I feel like um, we don't know who we are because we're so struggling with that dark Mm -hmm. that, that Lynette was talking about. We don't know that we're lovely. We're still focused so much on the past and... And that's really what builds a wall between us and Christ is because we've got, and that's what I do all the time at House of Hope, you know, Mm -hmm. um, helping women through Bible studies to heal from their, from their past um, with different issues. And I feel like that is, has been and and is continuing to be um, a stumbling block for women. Mm -hmm. I go back again to the fact that it's dark, but lovely. You can always almost say dark and lovely Yes. yes, because Again, go to, uh, you know, Proverbs 31 and that that woman who absolutely never sleeps, <laughs> that, mm-hmm. that virtuous woman, while it is yet night, she rises, you know, to take care of her household. So, again, back to you, Lonette, who rises while it is yet night to tend to your household. Again, we 
hit different stages in our lives. And I think I opened this by saying you're in one of the busiest ones that I can even remember. But then, as you say, our identity, you know, we're so wrapped up in those relationships. Okay, right now, Lana, you're doing, you're in overdrive mommy time. But then a couple of kids go off to school and the house seems a little quieter and things are very different. And who am I now? Mm-hmm. How do you begin to, I'll throw this again out to all three of you, how do we find who we are as our situations change and our relationships change when we get so much of our identity out of those things? Right. Well, I think just with the Lord, how we are to be adaptive. We adapt well. Women are adapters. Um, to different seasons of life. But I think sometimes we get surprised by the new season God brings to us. And so we don't adapt, then all of a sudden we're feeling like we're struggling a little bit. But I think um, what I have found in my own relationship with Christ is adapting to and listening intently to the Spirit. I think that's where when we sit with Christ on a daily basis and we find out what our marching orders are for the day, He teaches us how to adapt Mm-hmm. from uh, being an empty nester to now what, Lord? And I think that's what is so beautiful about a relationship with Christ. It's ongoing. It's from glory to glory. And we're ever changing. And I think once we have a mindset of thinking we're done is when we're not in a good place. Oh, no, yeah. So we have to always be um, just seeking the Lord for what's next for us because it's ever changing. New adventure. But, but he's so great because we're women who are adaptable. We He knows we have multitasking pro- all the time. We are always changing, adapting, making things happen. I'm grateful to be a woman because I- I've learned well with him how to really uh, make priority. What's, what is f- the first priority? And Matthew 6, 33 is our household uh, Bible verses. Seek first the kingdom of God mm-hmm. and his righteousness and everything else will fall into place. So when we keep him first... He's going to make things happen, and he's going to speak to us. And it Mm -hmm. may be something that we have to change up in the way we think to move on to the next Mm -hmm. season of life that he's asked and called us to. I always find out that uh, I'm always really ready for the stage I'm leaving. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Not so so on top of things as far as what's coming along the pike. Mm -hmm. But I am really good at the one that we're done with. (laughs) Yeah. I've got that nailed by that time. Stephanie, tell us about the conference itself. What can we look forward to? Oh, it's going to be just an amazing time. Um, You're going to hear from Lynette. You're going to hear from um, a panel of four women who are going to come with their own story and how they are living beautifully brave through that. Um, I'm going to share also, you're going to have lunch, a great time with, with friends, Women are definitely want to want to bring a, a girlfriend, and uh, what should we add to that? Well, amazing worship. Yeah, yes. Krista Domer um, is going to be leading us in worship, and she leads from an acoustic guitar, and she just has just a heart mm. of David worshiping mm. the Lord, and so she's going to bring us into the throne room of grace. Um, we're going to have photo ops. There are going to be um, lots of good lunch, breakfast. I mean, it's for $25. It really is not a lot of money for a day's conference. It's going to be from doors open at 8 o'clock in the morning, um, and we'll go all the way until 3.30. We'll have a couple breaks. We'll let um, everyone have lunch. Um, but there will be a lots of fun, lots of door prizes, things for people to do. But I think more than anything is that God just wants us to come together as women, to lift each other up, to worship him in spirit and in truth, to see him above all else and to know that the things of our life right now the cares of this world will can all just fall away from us so that we could be unified in the spirit and we can just worship him because he deserves all the glory and Mm -hmm. praise you said earlier women are hard on ourselves i love that you just said we're going to lift each other up because women can be hard on other women can be hard on each other you want to address that at all any of you Well, it's funny that you say that because I was just going to say um, in the last question that you asked the importance of having sisters around you Mm. in the transitions. Um, Stephanie has been one of those sisters for me, um, that you have women around you who can um, almost be like um, Aaron and her to kind of lift up your arms Mm -hmm. and to say, look, you can't get weary. We got to get through this together. You got to keep your arms up. You got to keep your head up, you know, because we need each other. And I think um, 
the trick of the adversary or, or the enemy would be to isolate us mm-hmm. and make us feel like, well, I can't tell anybody what's really going on. Um, and to cause us to compare ourselves with each other. Well, you know, well, Stephanie, you know, she's she's got this great life and this great this and this career and this and that. And, well, I don't know if I'll ever measure up or or on the flip side, to, to be catty and to um, to be critical of one another in their in in parenting and in marriage and in ministry and all of those things. Um, yeah, but boy. if we really look into what the father wants in his heart, is that his girls would get along, mm-hmm. and encourage one another, and and it's my responsibility as Stephanie's sister, as your sister Susie, to call out the loveliness I see in you, mm-hmm. to say, hey, look. This is who you're called to be. This is who I see you to be. When I talk to the Father about you, this is what he has to say. Because we need those reminders in the transitions and in the seasons of life. When I'm in that dark season, I need my sisters to come and remind me that I'm lovely. Mm. Aren't those two pitfalls, the comparison and the critiquing, which is comparing with a negative attitude about it, just two real pitfalls that for some reason, as women, we tend to fall into. We get we. Mm-hmm. We know we shouldn't. Just like we know we shouldn't be gossiping, but let me share this prayer request with you while I overshare right. about something someone's going on. We fall into that yes. so many times if we can just call ourselves on it and catch ourselves on it and even encouragingly call each other out on it. Definitely. I think, too, I've done some research on just loneliness and that more than 50% of all Americans are the loneliest they've ever been. And I think how, you know, you think how can that be in this social media driven world? Right. But what happens is um, you start seeing the posts on Facebook, you start looking and saying, oh, Instagram, wow, these people have their lives together. And they're really not. They're just Facebook and Instagram pictures. <laughs> but um, it, it's portrayed as they have it all together. So what happens naturally for a person whether you're a woman or a man, is you naturally look at your own life and start taking inventory, and then you start comparing, and then you start isolating, and that's where the enemy can have you. Mm. And that's where you start, or be not, you don't become part of the community. You don't go to church anymore. You start looking at yourself. So what happens is that's where the enemy wants. He comes to seek and destroy. Mm. And so when he comes in to cause division between relationships and between people, he'll keep you out of the church. And so our call is to rise up and to speak truth into this situation and to say, you are not alone. Christ is with you, and we are with you, and we want you to be with us as we journey through life. And that's, isolation is a huge thing, and loneliness. Loneliness is very, very prevalent in our world right now. Pretty deceptive social media, and it's a highlight reel. Who is going to post what their house looks like when they first wake (laughs) up in the morning and roll out of bed? Or what they look like when they first roll out of bed. Nobody does that. So... How do we register for this awesome conference that we all need? Well, there's a couple of different ways. I'll tell you, you can go to um, www.livingbeautifullybrave.com and click on the banner at the very top. And then Teresa will tell how you can connect through First Friends Church. Yes, so you can go to uh, First Friends Church, All Things Women, um, our Facebook page. You can go there, um, connect to that. And then you can also go to www.firstfriends.org forward slash women, and you'll see the conference and you'll be able to register online. If you're a part of our community at First Friends or not, you can hop in and do an on or just a regular registration and we'll be able to help you out there. But there's many ways to register for this event. And we invite all of you to come and bring a friend. Mm-hmm. And it's only $25, and you get fed spiritually yes. and physically. Mm-hmm. You're going to be well taken care of at this. Again, October 5th, 8 to 3.30 at Canton First Friends Church. Lonette, thank you so much for taking time out of your, I know, crazy busy day to spend some time with us over the phone. We will really look forward to hearing you. Stephanie Libertar, Teresa Maxim, thank you so much for bringing this to our community. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Thank, thank you, you Susie.